Coming up, it's a pebble that tells time, a surface that runs deep, a backpack for a hippo, and a scale for techie foodies. You gotta watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to Harry's.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code Before You Buy when you check out. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Get $25 off the Ring Video Doorbell when you go to ring.com slash before you buy. Hey, and welcome to Before You Buy. It's Twitch product review show where we take the latest and greatest gadgets and gizmos that we get into the Twit brick house and we give it to the staff, the host, the folk of the Twit TV army. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, and uh, I thought that maybe for this first review, we should take a look at something that you eat. So we brought in Mike Elgin to take a look at the Adaptix Drop Kitchen Scale for iPad. Now, Mike, that's a lot of stuff to put together. Why? Yeah. Why not, after all? I mean, this is a, when you're in the kitchen and you're actually doing real cooking, baking, whatever, it's a complicated process. But this product actually, despite the name, simplifies it radically. This is a $100 kitchen scale. This is the hardware of it right here. It looks like a Tupperware container. It, it does, doesn't it? The, and what you're uh, zeroing in on is that the, the material here is great. This is silicon, oh. which as you know, provides grippiness and heat, heat resistance. resistance. So you can take a boiling pot of water and put it right on there. and It'll tell you how much that boiling pot of water weighs, <laughs> of course, because it's a kitchen scale. But this is a this is a really nicely designed, as you can see. This is an Irish company, actually, uh, that, that nice created design. this thing like late last year. Uh, I've seen it on Amazon for $78.99. The list price is about 100 bucks, And it supports up to 13 pounds of weight. So it's uh, it's pretty uh, rugged. It what am I going to cook that weighs 13 pounds? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get. We're going to get to that, and okay. then you can <laughs> you can do that. Uh, and uh, and of course, but but the thing that's really interesting here is that this, this is a newish category of kitchen device because this is just a dumb scale. The intelligence is all in the free app. Oh. It's iPad only. That's where the iPad comes exactly. in. Exactly. Okay. So if you had a, if you could imagine a really sophisticated kitchen scale, it would have a great screen and lots of processing power and things. Of course, you've already got that in the iPad. So they're taking advantage of that. And of course, it connects uh, through Bluetooth. Two things before we get into all this that have to be kept in mind from a foodie perspective. Mm -hmm. One of them is that this is the clean way to cook because if you do everything through weighing it rather than measuring cups and measuring spoons, uh, the cleanup is great. You can often do one bowl cooking. You just dump stuff oh, in. So rather than having a bunch of different measuring cups that you have to clean exactly. later on, you're just pouring it straight into the bowl. Exactly. Right. So this general idea of cooking with weights is great for that reason, but the bigger reason is far more accurate. If you're doing baking and you're measuring flour, the amount of actual flour in that measuring cup depends on the amount of air That's and so right. on. When you weigh it, you get very exact uh, measurement. So, so weighing is the way to go, and so I really uh, I love that. Now, it, we mentioned the um, the grippiness of the top here. It has only one button, and that is the button right here. And the, the other thing is that it uses a watch battery because it doesn't have a yes, screen because CR it doesn't have a computer. Two, three, two, five or something it, like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. So, the real star of the show is not the hardware. The real star is the software. So we're going to show. Uh, this screen here, and this is the app right here. This is the iPad app, and you see the recipe view. But first, we're going to look at the scale view. Now, this is the scale. If you could throw the bowl on top of that, okay. that'd be great. So we're going to put. Well, a, I mean, do we want to zero that? Because right well, now, well, you can. But uh, nice. go ahead. Nice. Okay. Gonna, there we go. But we want to zero it after the bowl is on it, right? Oh, so, right. So we right, don't right. care how much the bowl weighs. And this is one of the benefits of this product: is that you can use your own bowls, any bowl. 
any container, coffee cup, whatever it is you want to use. So now it's and as this, if the bowl doesn't exist. Exactly. Okay. And then as I pour in the water here, you'll notice that it just goes up and you see this interface that shows the weight. And it's very accurate, especially for uh, larger amounts of weight. So I'm going to zero that out and get to the real magic of this app, which is the recipes. Now these recipes are built in. These are good, solid recipes. There isn't a great variety of recipes here, but let's take a look at the mini blueberry cobbler's recipe just to get started. Now, it looks like Pinterest, right? There's a card-based interface. I got to say, when I cook, it never ends up looking like the pictures. Yeah, I know. This is it's, nice. Well, you know, just what you do is you just make it, and then instead of taking a picture, just download the picture <laughs> that I've got here and, and post, post that on Instagram. So you'll notice that at the top of this, it says uh, it's an easy level. Prep time is 15 minutes. That's the actual time you'll have to spend. And then the total time is 40 minutes. That includes the time that it's in the oven when you can go watch a TV oh, show or something like that. This. And it's also great because it tells you exactly what you need. You need a spatula an oven, a spoon, you need the, 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 the drop uh, device itself. Which is perfect because I always start something and I realize I don't have yeah. something I need and so I end up using something I think might work, yeah. which is never a good thing. You learn the hard way, that's yeah. not right. And then, of course, it gives you the ingredients. Now look at this, it'll give you exactly what those ingredients are and how much. So you can say, yeah, I have blueberries, I have sugar, I have this, I have that. Now here's the real magic, here's the probably the single coolest thing about all this. So let's say I'm gonna make these things for just you and me. I don't want eight servings, we want two servings, right? Trying to have a civilization here. We can't be stuffing our faces with this thing. So I'm gonna click on the servings here. I'm gonna drop it down to two servings, uh -huh. hit done, and it rearranges all the amounts. Oh, very good. So you can do that based on, let's say you're gonna, you make a recipe and it calls for four cups of flour and you only have three and a half cups. It'll rearrange everything to be just the right amount. So okay, we got it ready to go. We start the recipe. So it tells you to preheat the oven. All right, we're gonna do that. Place <laughs> uh, the bowl. <laughs> On this is step by step. It absolutely is. Oh. Okay. Now here's the cool part too. So you get to blueberries. I'm going to hit done because I want to get to a, another thing here. So granulated sugar. Um, it tells you to put about two tablespoons. Actually, let me go to the. Let me go ahead a couple because I want to show you this. Now cornstarch. You click on the bottom. It shows you a tip and a photo. Tells you what this is supposed to look like. Okay. So we'll go back and go. Let's say pretend we're doing all this. I'm trying to get to a. Um, an amount that will show the, um, so this is a, not a good recipe for this, but let's go, let's go to another recipe because I really want to show this uh, feature here. Um, as you put in the ingredients, the weight will appear as you pour in the stuff. So let's say you, you put the mixing bowl there and you're supposed to add potatoes. Now watch what happens and look at the bottom of this card as I pour water into the bowl just to add some weight. You see, going up to the dotted line there, I don't have enough water to get to the top of the dotted line, <laughs> but everything in this is just filling it to the top of the dotted line, and as soon as that goes to the top of the dotted line, it kicks itself over to the next process. I, I like So it's not just an ingredient, it's actually teaching you how to make this thing. I, I like that. And it's, it's holding your hand to the maximum oh. extent. It's like, fill it... Put, you know, put potatoes in this thing until you get to the line. That's all you have to know at this point. All right, so this is a, you know, it, so you can you can imagine how this goes through, uh, how you can go through. It does substitutions uh, theoretically. I we'll noticed that at the minute. beginning, it kind of gives you a, it's a grading scale. It's how long is this going to take you and whether yeah. or not this is easy. Is is there a function on this app to say, hey, I, I have this much time and I need to make something that's intermediate difficulty or, or does that just, you just have to page through that? You have to page through. Okay. Um, there aren't very many recipes and that's a downside right Ooh. now. There are only you know, I don't know, three or four and dozen. You can't add recipes. You got to download. Correct. Them. Now this competes with a product uh, that's that's called uh, the Perfect Bake. Perfect Bake uh, has pros and cons as well, but Perfect Bake will allow you to put your own recipes in, and it's more flexible in that sense. But this is far more elegant, better designed, and it has a more warm and fuzzy user interface. But those are the two major uh, products in this category. So this is this is really. Um, uh, a fantastic way for someone who doesn't know how to cook to get started and to make really good recipes in a way that holds your hand. There are some minor glitches in here. There are little software problems. There's a substitution button. So if you don't have lemon juice, what else can I use? You tap the button and it says, oh, try lime juice or something like that. Or if you don't want to use sugar and you exactly. want to use Splenda or whatever right. you're going to use. Exactly. The pr it's been there for pr almost a year now and they haven't actually enabled that Ooh, service. So, so, so this, this company is very good on design and not great on follow-through. 
Um, and so that, that is one of the... And that uh, could be a big problem if you can't add your own recipes. Unless they're maintaining it, you, you're stuck with the recipes you got when you bought the thing. Exactly. Okay. Now, right. you, let, let's, let's, let's break this down. So obviously, the pros here, uh, it's dead simple. Yeah. And if you want to cook clean, if you want to use a techie angle to cooking that yeah. maybe might make it more exciting for you, that's great. What else is there? Well, the, 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 other, the fact that it's an iPad means that you can have the cooking down on the, on the counter... And you can put the iPad up with a magnet or up on a shelf, and it's away from the splattering batter and all that kind of stuff. So, and it's a nice, you know, clean view. One of the problems I've seen with scales in the past is you put a giant bowl on it, and you can't really see the interface, and it's a little LED thing. It's hard to read. It's minimal in information. This is a great way to use a scale is through the interface of the iPad. Uh, the other thing is you can use any bowls you want. Uh, you can, of course, scale the ingredients to... Uh, fit the number of people eating or the amount of ingredients you have and stuff, those are the pros. The cons are it's iPad only. So if you have an Android device or you want to use it on your iPhone, you're out of luck. This is literally iPad only. Uh, it's not perfectly accurate for very small quantities. It's supposed to be. It should be. Scales should be able to tell how much a tablespoon of salt weighs, for example. But I would recommend for anybody who gets this to go ahead and just measure those out, those very small quantities. Right. It's, it just kind of suffers, uh, it kind of struggles with the very small quantities. There aren't enough recipes and you can't add your own, so that's a limitation. I mean, you can use the scale for your own recipes, but you're either all in on the recipes or you're just using it as a scale, right? Those are, the, those are your essential options. Um, and generally, as I said, the company is not following through. I would expect them at some, they're probably working on it, they're probably a small startup. Um, and, and the initial design, the initial product is actually very good. And so those are the pros and cons essentially. It sounds like there are a lot more cons than pros. But I mean, those, those cons are things that could be fixed. I mean, it sounds like yeah. the biggest thing is they need to maintain it. If, yes. if they can prove to you that they can maintain it, then this is actually very attractive. That's right. But let's brass tacks here. Is this a try? A buy or a don't buy? This may surprise you, but I'm going to say this is a buy. And yeah. the reason is that this category of device, to use a tablet as the brains and the user interface for a scale, is great. It's by far the best way to do a scale in the kitchen. And there are essentially two contenders in this, and this is the better one. And so, personally, if I was going to choose a scale at this point, I would literally buy this product despite its flaws, even if much of the time... I would be using it just as a scale because I love the iPad interface. And by the way, you, we talked about them upgrading it. This stuff is all in the cloud. All of these recipes are in the cloud. You need a Wi-Fi connection to, to, for, your, for your iPad to get this stuff. You can't take that, it offline. That's, that's a downside, mm. but it's also an upside because they should be able to add recipes, add content. Yeah, it should make it, it easier for them. Exactly. And okay. so, you know, I, I have no problem with cloud. You know, everything in my house is cloud-based. The Amazon Echo is a cloud. Like, I, if my internet goes down, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm like rubbing sticks together to figure out how to start a fire and stuff like that. So, uh, so this is a buy for there sure. There you have it. $99. It's a buy for the Adaptix Drop Kitchen Scale for iPad from Mike Elgin. Of course, you can find Mike every weekday here on Twit TV. He does tech news today. If you want to know how your tech day starts, well, you, you got to be dropping by. Uh, you also write quite a bit, and you're hosting Twit this Sunday, correct? That's right, that's right. So where else can they go if they want to find out what you've been doing out in the world? Elgin.com. There we go. Is my blog, and I, I throw everything on there. Yeah, Mike, thank you very much for uh, giving us this delicious review thank of you. the Adaptix. Uh, but let me ask you a question. Yes. Uh, you probably have to shave more than I do. I have this okay. is this is like me going without a shave for yeah. a, a week, yeah. right? It, a bit of a chore, right? Yeah, I, I don't care for it usually. I mean, generally speaking, I'd rather not. Exactly, and I think yeah. that's actually how most people feel because yeah. it's a chore. I mean, even if even if you don't have to shave as much as most people, like, like I don't have to do that. It, it's a chore to go get a razor. I mean, if you don't have an electric, which you really shouldn't, yeah. you gotta go to the supermarket or the drugstore, and then they keep all the razors behind the little Fort Knox type encampment that you have to, it's yeah, expensive. no. They're expensive. They're expensive, gonna steal it's it. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you could go through all that hassle, and that's what makes it not fun, or you could actually turn shaving into something you enjoy by going with Harry's. That's right, Harry's is a supporter of this episode uh, before you buy. Uh, what is Harry's? Harry's is a way to get your razors, your supplies, everything you need from the handle and the, a beautifully crafted brush to, to the various creams and salves to, to make your shaving experience something wonderful. Uh, Harry's, 
knew, they knew that they needed to do something different. They couldn't just give you another disposable razor set. So they bought a razor factory. That's right, one of the two in the world that actually makes razors. So they can make razors according to their specifications. Now, their kits are like this. They're beautiful, they're gorgeous. They're, they're works of art as much as they are something for you to shave with. They make shaving fun. And since they make their own razors, they can give it to you at a price that you want to pay rather than something you have to pay out of extortion. Uh, Harry's gives us these high quality razors at about half the price. Since they make their own razors, they can ship them for free to your front door. And because they make their own kits, it means that they can control the quality so that your shaving experience is something that's fun. I've been using Harry's for a while now, as you can see, and it gives me a clean, close, and comfortable shave. I love the look and the feel of this set, and I love the price. It's about half as much as the razors at the store from Gillette or Fusion or any of those other brands. They also have a new aftershave moisturizer that protects and hydrates my skin. So when I do have to shave, I don't have to worry about that annoying razor burn, that itchy, scratchy feel that you might get after shaving. Well, you don't have to have that if you, if you shave right. Folks, here's what we want you to do. We want you to try Harry's. We want you to turn your shaving nightmare into a shaving luxury. Go to harrys.com and get $5 off your first purchase with the code before you buy. That's harrys, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com and enter the code before you buy at checkout. And we thank Harry's for their support of before you buy. Let's go ahead and move on to the next review. We asked uh, uh, Miriam to take a look at the Microsoft Surface 3, and this is what she found. Hi, it's Miriam, and welcome to Before You Buy. Today we have Microsoft's new Surface, the Surface 3. As you know, about a year ago in uh, June, May, whatever, 2014, uh, Microsoft launched the Surface Pro 3, and it really was kind of a pivot point for the Surface platform in the sense that it was really the first Surface that a lot of people finally acknowledged was a worthy, uh, a worthy product and device. I have a Surface Pro 3, and I really love it. Um, you know, if you, you're looking for something that has a, a, a great uh, input device and you're an artist and you like to, to, to jot and draw things, but you want the, the full power of Windows, the full power of an Intel-based PC, it's a pretty interesting platform. So um, until now, the Surface 1 and 2, the uh, non-pro versions, ran an ARM processor in Windows RT, which was a Windows version running on ARM, which meant you couldn't run any of the binaries, the uh, executables, the programs, the apps that you normally run on Windows. Uh, and, and that really made it kind of useless. So basically, you, you got an iPad that... Uh, you know, wasn't as good as an iPad. So with the Surface 3 this year, which came out a few months ago, they've kind of remedied that. Instead of uh, using an ARM processor, they've gone to an Atom-based Intel processor, which means this is running a full-blown version of Windows 8.1, and it will be getting Windows 10 when it comes out in the fall. Um, and of course, you know, it, it follows, in terms of design, a kind of a combination of the original Surfaces and Surface 2, and as well as some of the design elements we've seen on Surface Pro 3. So let me, let me walk you around. First of all, what you need to know is that this keyboard here is uh, detachable. It's magnetically latched, just like all the Surfaces. And what they've added is this, um, this angle. So you can, you can mount it at an angle like this. In the old surfaces, you can only go flat with a keyboard like that. But now you have this really great little magnetic uh, angle thing. This is something they introduced on the Surface Pro 3, but they uh, finally put it on to the Surface 3 as well. So that's an, that's an improvement on the keyboard. It's also backlit now, which is a really good thing. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure if the Surface 2 keyboard was backlit, but the Surface 1 wasn't. Um, and um, it also feels a little more rigid when you're typing on this keyboard. But, but the thing you have to keep in mind is that this keyboard doesn't come in with the package. So what you really get in the box is the tablet itself, right here, and this pen, which is uh, a, uh, it's not actually not a Wacom one, it's, it's similar to that. It has an, actually a AAA battery in there, it's an active pen. Uh, the battery lasts pretty much forever, like a year or two. And uh, it's easy to replace, you just screw off the top. And uh, it lets you jot, it has pressure sensitivity. It's a much more precise technology than the Wacom stuff that um, Microsoft was using before. And it's the same pen that's used on the Surface Pro 3. It was introduced basically with the Surface Pro 3 last year and it carries over to the Surface 3. Um, so there it is. 
uh, very thin, uh, thinner than the original two surfaces, um, a bit thicker, I think, potentially, or maybe just about as thin as the Surface Pro 3, which is really thin. So we check the specs on that. Uh, and then the other big deal is that the, uh, the, st the kickstand does not unfold um, in an infinite uh, number of levels. It, it only has these three levels, one, two, and three, uh, whereas the Surface Pro 3 has an infinitely adjustable kickstand. So you can kind of put the, the in any angle, but not this one. So that's a bit of a cut, uh, cost cutting measure, I guess, from the Surface Pro 3 to the Surface 3. Uh, but other than that, it's a very, very similar industrial design. One of the advantages of using an Atom processor uh, uh, instead of a core uh, processor is that this doesn't have any fan. So it's fanless, there is no vents anywhere around. Normally on the Surface 3, you'd see vents. Uh, and then the other thing that's changed this year is that it charges over micro USB. Um, so it comes with a kind of a beefy micro USB charger, but potentially it'll charge slowly on a regular phone charger, which is a really big deal. If you don't want to carry an extra charger around, you can carry the Microsoft Surface charger and then charge your Android or Windows phone device. Uh, other ports of note, there's a USB 3 port standard size right here. Uh, there is a mini display port port, similar to what you find on the Max. Um, well, on the Max is Thunderbolt now, but it does display port through the Thunderbolt. It's the same, same connector, but this does not do Thunderbolt. Um, under the kickstand here, just like on Surface 3 Pro, there is a micro SD card reader. Micro SD is a bit of a weird choice. I mean, obviously, most camera... Uh, photographer people that use cameras are going to use an, a regular SD card and I think putting a regular SD card in here would have been a, a better move but for some reason they went micro SD and this is also an issue on the Surface Pro 3. So on top here you have the power lock key, the volume button next to it and that's really um, a walk around of, of this tablet. There is um, the magnetic a port for the keyboard here. So it's not a Bluetooth keyboard, it doesn't have a power source which is great. You just plug it in like this and off you go. All you need is to pull out the kickstand and you have this kind of laptop setup. Now, I want to bring this up because I have this issue with the Pro 3 as well. This, is, this doesn't really make a very good laptop replacement because on your lap, this setup is a little bit uh, unstable. So laptop is really not the word here, but it gives you a full keyboard with a trackpad um, which has gestures and PC, what do you expect from a modern trackpad on a modern PC today? I'm just going to log in real quick and show you the display a bit. So this is what it looks like. Um, it is uh, a, a 1920 by 1280 pixel display. It's not bad. It's not as good a display as on the Pro 3 for sure, but it's uh, it's a serviceable, perfectly fine display. Um, you know, nothing Retina here, but uh, it is. this is Microsoft's entry-level device. And as you can see, it runs Windows 8.1, and you have a full uh, classic desktop available to you here. So, um, of course, you get Internet Explorer, you get Microsoft Office for free with this device, which is really kind of nice. Um, so let's talk price because, you know, all this time I've said the keyboard is extra and, you know, I've been comparing it to Surface Pro 3 and the reason for that is, you know, because it's not running Windows RT and it's not ARM-based, it's actually an Intel Atom processor running a full-blown version of Windows uh, in 8.1. Really, you now can choose either or without feeling like you lose out on, on a proper Windows experience. However, of course, you know, differences in processor, screen size, and there's a few other things like the kickstand I mentioned, the USB charging. But the price really is where there's a big difference, right? $499 for just the tablet. So ignore the keyboard for a second. This little device right here with this pen is a 499 base. So it's, that gives you two gigs of RAM, uh, a, a quad core uh, Atom processor, and a 64 gig SSD. And then uh, 799 is the price, entry level price for the Surface Pro 3. And that's giving you four gigs of RAM with 64 gig SSD, but a full blown core i3 or core core based processor. So a lot more oomph, but of course you have a fan. The battery life's not going to be as good. Battery life on this is really good. I can't remember exactly what it's rated at, but you can probably go something like seven or eight hours without having to recharge, probably more even, if you're not like doing some heavy lifting. In a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's kind of a Surface Pro 3 from last year Redux rather than a completely separate product that's kind of trying to be a tablet only device. It really is a full blown PC. And for that, it is awesome. But 
499 is a little pricey because it doesn't include the keyboard. And I think, honestly, a proper PC experience, because you can't really compare this to an iPad. It's not really meant to compete with an iPad anymore. Um, I think it's it's it does a lot more things. It's got a few more sli uh, tricks on its sleeve. And I think it's a little disappointing that, um, you know, the price is so high without, you know, if you had the keyboard. If you, if you don't have the keyboard, it just doesn't seem quite as nice of a fit. Of course, the keyboard has like a cover. It's blue here. It's nice. It's a kind of a fake suede. It comes in different colors. You can get different keyboard colors. Again, a lot of this carries over from the original Surface and Surface 2. Um, and the uh, back here, of course, you have a camera. And, uh, you know, it's just a basic camera. It's not nothing fancy. There's a front-facing camera as well uh, for your, your selfies and... Uh, it's right up here for, you know, video conferencing, Skype calls, that stuff. You know, it is a full-blown PC, so keep that in mind. Um, the pro is you get a full Windows experience with this device, right? It's no longer competing in, with Android tablets and I iPads, I think, because it gives you access to this incredible library of apps and programs for Windows. And a lot of them are going to run on Windows Classic, which means con that you need the keyboard and trackpad to really make best use of this device. Uh, another pro is that it's beautifully designed I th and it's beautifully made. The material here, this is some sort of magnesium alloy metal. I mean, you know, it's it's got an industrial design, I think that really sticks out and makes it very unique. The kickstand thing is, you know, nowhere else to be seen. And, and I believe that Microsoft is onto something for this. Um, it's very different than an iPad or a cheap, plasticky Android tablet. So in that sense, 499 might be justifiable. But again, I think 499 with a keyboard would make it, you know, a, a really compelling thing. Now, if you are going to look at this product, because of what it does, you're also going to want to look at the Surface Pro 3. And so this is, again, um, a con because... The Surface Pro 3 gives you so much more higher resolution screen, faster processor, um, and more RAM. Of course, it's more expensive, but now you really have a laptop kind of level class device with the Pro 3. So, so it seems to be a little compromised to me. Um, I'll, I'll make it clear and say that I really love this, uh, this device, but if I had to pick, I'd pick the Pro 3 and spend the extra money. So is it a buy? Well, I think it's a try. Um, it really depends on what your needs are. Do not buy this if you're sh cross shopping with an iPad or an Android tablet. It's a different beast. But if you're cross shopping with a laptop or an affordable laptop, a uh, really thin ultralight, um, net, uh, not netbook, but um, ultrabook, or you're shopping, you know, you're comparing this with the Surface Pro 3, then perhaps it becomes something to consider. Um, but you know, if you're you're going to find the limitations of this device really rapidly with the Atom processor versus the Surface Pro 3. So that's why I would say that it's a, it's a try. For some people, it's going to fit. But for a lot of people, I think they're going to be better served with the Surface Pro 3. So that's it. The Surface 3 on, uh, before you buy here, this is Microsoft's uh, latest and greatest tablet. A few too many compromises and a price point that maybe isn't right, so Miriam Jouar gives a try to the Surface, Surface 3, not the Surface Pro. Uh, another point is that the Surface Pro 4 is probably going to be dropping in just a few months, so if you are looking at the 3, wait a little while and maybe it may actually hit that magical price point. We thank Miriam Jouar. Don't forget you can find her on many nights on All About Android here on the Twit TV network, as well as her Twitter account if you want to find out what kind of content she might be making at Tank Girl. That's just Tank Girl, remove all the vowels. Coming up, we've got a, a special product, one that was much anticipated, the largest Kickstarter in history. That's right, Pebble went back to its roots and they gave us the Pebble Time. We gave it to Megan Maroney to find out if an iOS user might like a little pebble. I am Megan Maroney and I host Tech News Tonight, iOS Today and i5 for the iPhone and I am going to review the new Pebble Time smartwatch. 
When I backed the Pebble Time Kickstarter back in February, it was after the Apple Watch had been announced, before it had been shown off by Apple, and long before you could order the Apple Watch. But by the time I received my Pebble a few weeks ago, I had had my Apple Watch for two months, and it may as well have been embedded into my skin. I am that attached to it. I wear it every day, and it continues to surprise me with all the magical things that I never knew it could do, and the new things that it can do, like play my Apple Music playlist, even when I, my phone is nowhere nearby. So this will not be a pebble time versus the Apple Watch. That would be like comparing apples and oranges or comparing John Hamm to any other man in the world. No offense to my husband. This is simply a review of the Pebble Time, a watch that I paid $189 for and that you can now pre-order for $200. One more caveat, Apple has not made it easy for Pebble to work with the iPhone. You're gonna get a lot of additional features if you sync it to an Android phone. If you have an iPhone, you'll download the free Pebble Time app from the App Store. That was the first problem I ran into. I had the old Pebble app, and so my watch never showed up when I tried to pair it, nor was it very intuitive to figure out what I was doing wrong. In fact, without the kind folks in the iOS Today chat room who were watching me struggle with it before the show, I might not have even known what I was doing wrong ever. So once I finally got the watch to pair, it took a few more days for me to find the time to set it up. In the meantime, it unpaired itself and I had to repair it, but that wasn't easy either. I had to restart the watch and reinstall the Pebble Time app. I'm not saying this is the most complicated piece of technology, but what can I say? I expected a little more. The always on color e-paper display is nice. You don't have to turn your wrist or press any buttons to turn it on like some other smartwatches. The buttons on the side let you go back and forth in time on your calendar or the weather or other notifications. Here is the Pebble Time app interface. There are a few more faces and if you want more, there are lots to choose from. Some of these I added manually. Here is the app section. The Pebble Time came with some basic apps, none of which were amazing, but that's not to say that they couldn't be amazing in the future. The place Pebble really shines is notifications. If you just wanna to watch to alert you that you have a message, an appointment, phone calls, or other notifications, then this works great for that. If you wanna make voice replies or take notes, you'll have to have an Android phone. The ability to respond with voice on iOS will come with a later update. Now let's get to the pros and cons. Pros, the battery life, it lasts for seven days. It's true, it really does. I guess that's not really that surprising since it doesn't do all that much, but it is very nice not to have to worry about charging it as often as you would with some other watches. You can even sleep with it on, which I like, although it will turn on every once in a while when you turn and that can be disturbing in the night. So it's up to you if you wanna sleep with it. It's waterproof, really waterproof. You can shower in the pebble time, you can go swimming with it, wash dishes, dance in the rain, whatever, as long as you don't go deeper than 30 meters. That's about 100 feet. The watch notifications are helpful if you don't like to have your phone sound on, but you're waiting for a call or an email or a text or a notification of any kind, and the alert can't wait. Uh, the notifications work just as advertised. The simplicity is also a pro. There's something nice about only having two screens to deal with on the app. Uh, once you, I got the thing paired, everything else was pretty easy to navigate. Since the watch doesn't do much, there's no fear of missing out if you don't sit down and read a, the whole manual to find out everything it does. It does very few things and it does them pretty well. Another pro is the display. The color always on e-paper display is very nice. It looks great outside, whereas sometimes it's hard to see the screen of the Apple Watch when you're outside. Here are the cons. The watch itself is not that elegant. While it's an improvement over the original Pebble, it's still a bit geeky and kind of cheap looking. Uh, the buttons are not easy to push and that's the only way to interact with a Pebble. You can touch the screen all you want, but nothing will ever happen. Uh, speaking of the screen, it's kind of dull looking when you're inside. Uh, the features are lacking, as I've said, for iOS. I think the only way this is really worth it is if you only have $200 to spend on a smartwatch and you can't find a way to scrape together or justify the additional $150 you'd have to pay to get the Apple Watch Sport. Um, the graphics are a little old fashioned. Maybe you like that. Maybe it's quirky and retro for you. Um, I didn't love them. Uh, it took a few tries to pair the watch with my phone. As I said, that was definitely a con. That is it. If you're an Android user and you like notifications on your wrist and you want a waterproof smartwatch that you don't have to charge very often, then I would give it a buy. If you're an iPhone user, I would give it a don't buy. I am Megan Maroney and I host Tech News Tonight, iOS Today, and i5 for the iPhone. There you have it. It's a split decision for Megan Maroney on the Pebble Time. It's a buy if you're an Android user, a don't buy if you're iOS.
Of course, you can find Megan Maroney every weekday for Tech News Tonight at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time, as well as for i5 for the iPhone and iOS Today. Now, we we want to do something a little special. We gave it to Megan. Of course, Megan is an iOS person. That's what she does. Those are her shows. So we decided we wanted to give the Pebble Time another go. In fact, we wanted to give it to an Android person. She said it's a buy for an Android watch or an Android user, but we have our own in-house Android expert. We gave it to Jason Howe. He's going to come back in a couple of weeks after using the Pebble Time and tell us if it actually is a buy for you Android folks out there. Now, when we come back, we're going to be giving a bag, an elegant bag, to cranky hippo Brian Burnett to see what he thinks about something that you can carry all your tech in. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a moment to thank the second sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy. It's a company that I actually really enjoy. It's Ring. A Ring makes this. This is the video doorbell. And what it does is what the name might indicate. One of the things I like about the Ring set is that they include everything you need for installation. That includes the video doorbell, the tool, the drill bit, and yeah, the screws, and even the level so you can make sure that you install it properly on your door jam. Oh, what does this do other than make that pleasant sound when you press it? It replaces your current doorbell with a device that will both ring the internal uh, doorbell for your home and ring your phone. Now, I've got one installed for my parents in Henderson, Nevada, because I was a little worried about their security. They've had a couple of break-ins recently. People who would come to the door, they'd ring it, and they'd basically try to find out if you're home. Well, what this will do is it allows me to keep a video log of the people who approach the door. It's not just the people who ring it, it's, it's motion sensitive. So for example, this guy, he rang the doorbell today and then he just walked away. Well, we now have him on video. If something were to happen in the future, well, we'd know exactly who that was. This is the kind of thing that Ring wants to do. It's not just about a doorbell, it's about being a security appliance and they do it well. Now, one of the other really cool features about this is there's a built-in lithium-ion battery that will last for one year. That's right, one year connected to your internal Wi-Fi system. Oh, if you also have external power that can plug into this, so if you have a, one of those doorbells that's actually powered, it will run straight off that power, so it will never, ever need power from your home, uh, I mean, from, from its, uh, its own internal battery, except when you lose power in the house. I, I got to say, this is one of these devices that I love having on my shows because I use it personally, and not just personally, but for my parents, and I'm very protective about my parents. Now, if you want to try the Ring Video Doorbell, and really, who wouldn't? We've got a special deal. Right now, you can get it for $25 off because you listen to Before You Buy. Just buy it at ring.com slash before you buy, and make sure to use our code, and you'll get $25 off, $174 for a peace of mind. Folks, if you want security, if you want luxury, if you want the convenience of being able to find out who's coming up to your home anytime, any place, any day, anywhere, on any device, you got to try Ring. And we thank Ring for their support of Before You Buy. As promised, we gave the ECBC, catchy name, executive day pack to Brian Burnett, the cranky hippo, and we asked him to lug around his tech for a week and see if it's something that you might want. And uh, this is what he thought. This is Brian Burnett from Before You Buy, here to show you the Lance Executive Day Pack from ECBC. And before we get into the nitty gritty, this backpack comes in at $149.99. If you are someone who travels a lot and have a lot of gadgets, or you just have a lot of gadgets, this backpack is really good for all of that. On each side of the backpack are stretchable water bottle holders, and every zipper on the backpack feels really nice. And they're also self-repairing water sealing YKK zippers. This backpack comes in gray and black. Clearly, this is the gray edition, which looks pretty sharp to me. And in the front part, pocket I have the power pack provided by ECBC uh, this is sold separately but definitely a must-have if you are want to charge gadgets on the go it is a 4500 milliamp storage capacity and uh, is really slim and works well in the first main pocket you have plenty of space to uh, stow away some stuff here there's a, a mesh bag here where I keep uh, a few little things maybe an SD card and stuff uh, what you'll notice about this backpack is that there's plenty of uh, compartments to store stuff. And as I go along, all this material is water resistant. You don't have to worry about your electronics getting ruined. In the next pocket, uh, there's a convenient 
tablet storage area. Uh, I happen to have my iPad in there and it works really well. It's has a soft felt material on the inside and it has a uh, Velcro strap to hold it in so it doesn't slosh around if your backpack gets turned upside down or something like that. Uh, and there's also another convenient little mesh pouch if you need it. And this is one of the bigger pockets of the backpack so I'm able to fit in like you know, a sweatshirt or something like that. And this is one of my favorite features is at the top is a smaller bag with a also the same felt material for sunglasses or maybe your headphones, just so you, you don't have to worry about your electronics getting scratched in there. And it, it's nice to have that easy access. And one of my favorite things about this backpack is that the zippers open all the way side to side and it opens this flap all the way down. And this is ECBC's fast pass system, which makes it a lot easier getting through the airport and TSA. It is made large enough for a 17 inch laptop. And inside I have my 13 inch Mac Air, which fits perfectly, keeps it nice and secure. And also at the bottom of the sleeve is a bolster, uh, which helps not only protect my laptop, but keep it you know, secure. If you had a bigger laptop, you can pull it out, you know, remove it so you can make room for a larger 17 inch laptop. Now getting to the front of the backpack, all the straps feel really strong. There's a padded back plate, I guess is what you'd call it. And that gives you support when you have, you're wearing the backpack. All the straps feel really high quality. All the clips feel really nice and solid. I also looked really hard for any loose threads or you know some material that was out of place, but everything on this backpack was pretty much immaculate. All the threads were really well sewn together. Uh, all the materials felt really nice and solid. The clips were strong. I, I had really no complaints about any part of this backpack. There's also a little bit of uh, padding inside the shoulders to give you extra comfort when you're holding it. Even when I had this backpack fully loaded, I went to Paramount Great America, wore it all day. I've uh, been using this backpack for two weeks. It's really comfortable. Um, I could wear it for long periods of time with no discomfort. It's hard to believe that I would get excited about a backpack until I got introduced to this backpack, but I have to say I, uh, I really liked using this backpack. Uh, the pros and cons of this backpack, uh, the first pro for me is the quality. All the materials, the threads, uh, everything just felt really well made. Um, the next is the pro is the design. I could easily find a compartment for any one of my gadgets. Lots of different storage arrangements and clever ways to secure your laptop or tablet. And the final pro would be comfort. It's the most comfortable backpack that I've ever worn. As for cons, I really struggled to come up with anything other than the price at $150 is a little expensive, but at no part of this backpack felt cheap at all. It all felt really solid. And from the two weeks that I had it, I feel like this backpack would last a really long time. The only other con that really came to mind was what the heck does ECBC stand for? Uh, the only things I could think of are exceptionally cool backpack company, uh, East Coast Biker Chicks, Enterprise Chinchilla Breeders Collective. I don't know. These are just some of the acronyms I could come up with. I couldn't find out what ECBC really stood for, though. So in the end, is it a buy, try, or don't buy? Uh, I have to give it a thumbs up and a buy. I'm really regretting having to send this backpack back to ECBC, uh, but I am definitely gonna pick one up for myself because I really liked it. This has been Brian Burnett for Before You Buy. Thanks for watching. So he's not a big fan of the name of the company, ECBC, but Brian Burnett really likes the executive day pack. Even at $149, $150, it seems like something that's high quality and uh, maybe something that I'll have to steal if we get another review copy. Who knows? Now, now is the time where we get to do the parting shot. This is a review that's not really a review. Products that normally wouldn't merit a review of their own, we take them out, we spin them and see if maybe they might be something you might want to pick up. I wanted to go with something in a theme, specifically summer travel. I know a lot of you are going to be hitting the road. A lot of you are going to be getting out of your cars, maybe into a rental car somewhere far, far away. So I went back into the before you buy offices and I found two products I think maybe you might want to take a look at. This is the Canevo, Canevio, I'm just going to call it Canevio, BTC450. It's a Bluetooth connection device. And this is the Winter Gear Montar, which is a universal 
car mount for your mobile device, for your cell phone or your tablet. Now, this is the BTC450. It's a Bluetooth hands-free car kit. And just like it sounds, it's designed to plug into the accessory adapter, the 12-volt adapter inside of your car. Now, this is my rental that I had in Honolulu. It's got a couple of pieces to it. Of course, there's the part that goes into the accessory port. There's a cord that goes into the auxiliary port. And it's actually really simple to install. It also has a, a very nice little 12-volt, that 5-volt, 5-volt, 1-amp port at the, the top. It's not really enough to charge a tablet, but it's more than enough to keep a cell phone from completely discharging, even if you have one of those cell phones with the larger screens. A way it connects to your car is through the auxiliary port on your stereo, and uh, then it just pairs simply by, uh, by turning on. When it turns on, it'll pop up as a Bluetooth device. And you can pair it with your phone or your tablet. One of the other things I really like about this is it has a little button here that allows it to work with all Bluetooth devices on either uh, A2DP, HFP, HSP and AVRCP, which are the different ways to control your devices. Uh, with my Android device, it means that if I press it, a quick press, it will play or stop whatever's playing. For example, if I've got the NPR1 uh, uh, application up or if I'm playing a piece of music. If I long press it, it will activate uh, my Google Now. And it actually has two buttons at the top, which I don't use a lot, but you can go forward and back on tracks. It's, it's a very interesting feature. I, I didn't have much hope for this, but it turned out that it, it, it worked quite well. And uh, it actually worked with my Android phone and with my iPad and uh, even with my Windows laptop. So it definitely works with all different Bluetooth devices. Now, the companion piece to this was the Winter Gear Montar. Again, I didn't have a whole lot of hope for this. I've seen a lot of mounts before, and they've all been kind of chintzy. They don't ever really stick onto the surfaces that they're supposed to stick on, unless, unless you put it on the windshield. And I don't like hanging things on my windshield. And uh, you know, I've had a lot that have broken off at the universal mount. We've also got uh, some B-roll for this that Victor's going to run that shows you the bottom. Uh, this, this is where it started telling me it was a little different. It doesn't have a suction cup. This is more of a, like a suction butt. It, 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 it's the only way I can, I, I can describe it. It can stick to surfaces that I have never been able to adhere suction cups uh, to. It, it's got sort of the sticky feel. And uh, if it ever starts gumming up with a bunch of lint or dust, you just give it a quick wash and it's ready to go again. It's got a nice 360 degree rotation on the cup and it has a friction holder clamp. So it will basically work with every device up to phones of 5.3 inches. Uh, now, I, I really like that fat bottom suction cup, but you also saw that it has a little pad that you can add so that when you go on vacation, when you take this on the road, it's going to stick to pretty much everything. I, I put this on a, on a surfboard. I put it on my windshield. I put it on my dashboard. I even stuck this to the cooler at the beach. And in fact, this is it stuck to the bottom of my drone as I flew it in Hawaii. Yeah, that's right. It, it was able to withstand all that pressure and all that vibrational force. Uh, this goes for about $30. This goes for about $35, the BTC 450. And I'd have to say, even though I didn't have great expectations going into the travel, I didn't think that these were going to be good products. They are worth every single dollar. If you want a nice traveling kit that doesn't take up a lot of space, that works well with every device, that does exactly what it says it's going to do, you can pick up both for under $70. Again, that's the Winter Gear uh, what do you call this thing? The uh, the uh, uh, the Montar and the Canevo BTC 450. It's a definite buy. That's it for this episode of Before You Buy. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget that you can find all of our episodes at our website at twit.tv slash BYB before you buy if you want to check out our past episodes or maybe look at our show notes. Also, don't forget that there's a little menu there for you to automatically subscribe to our downloads. If you want to get our episodes into your device of choice, in your format of choice, it's a great way to do it. Also, don't forget that you can follow me on Twitter. Just go to twitter.com slash PadreSJ. That's at PadreSJ, and you'll be able to find out what I'm doing in between shows, what I'm going to be doing on my shows, and you'll be able to suggest products for future shows. That's actually one of the ways that we find out what you want to see on the show. Lastly, I want to thank everyone who makes this show possible. Of course, to all of our reviewers, to Mike Elgin, to Miriam Jawar, to Megan Maroney, and to Brian Cranky Hippo Burnett, as well as to Lisa and Leo for letting us do the show, and to Karsten, my super producer. Finally, I want to thank my TD, who has bravely stood in for Brian Burnett while he's gone. I don't know if he's going to talk. He, he really should. Victor, if you could tell the folks uh, what you do here at TWIT TV. 
he doesn't want to. I, I, I almost want to force him to do it because really I, I thank him for doing this. Victor, say something. Say hello to the, the folks at home. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Padre. <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here, just reminding you that you got to watch before you buy. <laughs>